my name is Jane Turner and this is Alice in Wonderland as retold by John Sietza with pictures by Mary Blair. Have you ever tried to listen to a long, boring school book on a warm, lazy day? And have you ever wondered why anyone would make a book so boring? Then you're just like Alice, because that is exactly what happened to her. As Alice sat warm and sleepy, trying to listen to her sister read and daydreaming of how she would make books much more interesting and how she would make a world with less sense and more nonsense and how she might or might not make a chain of daisies, a white rabbit ran by. Now, Alice didn't think it was strange to see a rabbit, but she did think it was very strange to see this rabbit take out a watch and to hear him say, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date, which is why Alice, Curious, jumped up and followed the white rabbit right into his rabbit hole, which is how Alice, very curious, found herself suddenly falling and falling and falling and falling. The rabbit hole was either very deep or she was falling very, very slowly because it took a very long time for her to land with a gentle thump. Alice saw the white rabbit disappear through a tiny door Curiouser and curiouser, said Alice, who was so surprised she forgot how to speak correct English. She was much too big to fit through the rabbit-sized door, so she followed the directions on a bottle that said, Drink me. Alice shrunk down to just the right size and grabbed the doorknob, which of course was locked. And the key, of course, was on a now ginormous tabletop way above her head. Alice spotted a box of cookies marked, Eat Me. She followed directions again, and she grew, and grew, and grew, until she was much too big to fit through any door. Alice felt so sad. Now, how would she ever catch up to the white rabbit? She cried gallons of giant tears. Luckily, the tears floated the drink-me bottle right into her giant hand. She drank, and she shrank. Now tiny Alice floated on the sea of her own salty tears right through the keyhole. The waves of giant tears washed Alice ashore and, on and into the woods. Something wiggled in the bushes. It must be the white rabbit, thought Alice. But it wasn't. It was two odd fellows named Tweedledee and Tweedledum. They didn't look very helpful. But to be polite, Alice introduced herself. Hello, my name is Alice, said you-know-who, and I'm following a white rabbit. She's curious, said Tweedledee. The oysters were curious too, said Tweedledum. And you remember what happened to them. What did happen to the oysters? asked Alice. Tweedledee and Tweedledum happily recited their poem about the curious oysters. The oysters were invited to dinner by the walrus, but they ended up being the dinner. That's a very sad story, said Alice, but it's got a good moral, said Tweedledee, if you're an oyster. <laughs> Tweedledee and Tweedledum started reciting more strange poems, so Alice snuck away to search deeper into the forest for her white rabbit. A loaf of bread and butterflies flew lazily overhead, and Alice spotted crabgrass and a tiny horse with wings and rockers. A rocking horse fly, said Alice. Talking flowers? Alice thought this was wonderful. And have you ever thought that something was going to be so wonderful, but it turned out not quite wonderful? Well... That's what happened to Alice. The flowers talked and the flowers sung, but then they started asking questions. What kind of garden do you come from? What species are you? Then the flowers started yelling, she's a weed. The nasty flowers chased Alice out of the garden. Alice ran and ran until she was right back where she started, lost. Alice was just beginning to worry when she saw a toothy smile floating in a tree. The smile turned into a Cheshire cat and said, If you'd really like to know, he went that away. Who did? asked Alice. The wide rabbit, said the cat. He did? He did what? Went that way. Who did? The white rabbit, said Alice. What rabbit? said the grinning cat. Oh, said Alice. Though... If I were looking for a white rabbit, said the cat, I'd ask the Mad Hatter. Oh, but I don't want to go among mad people, said Alice. Oh, you can't help that. Most everyone is mad here. <laughs> the Cheshire Cat disappeared. 
Alice found the Mad Hatter and March Hare having a tea party to celebrate their on birthdays. The Mad Hatter sang, Now statistics prove that you've got one birthday, but there are 364 unbirthdays. Why, today's my unbirthday too, said Alice. The March Hare and the Mad Hatter cheered and poured tea everywhere. The little sleeping Dormouse woke up and joined the celebration by reciting a poem that sounded almost familiar, but not quite right. After reciting, he fell promptly to sleep. Alice thought that this tea party was too curious, even for her. So when the March Hare asked her to stay for more tea, Alice answered, oh, I just haven't got the time. The time? The time? Who's got the time? yelled the Mad Hatter. And like an answer to a question, a small figure hopped through the hedge, looked at his watch, saying, No time, no time, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. It's the White Rabbit, cried Alice. The Mad Hatter grabbed the White Rabbit's watch and held it to his ear. No wonder you're late. This clock is exactly two days slow. The Hatter and the Hare popped open the watch. They buttered the gears. They sugared the springs. Then strawberry jammed the wheels. Tick, tock, tick, tick, tock, tock, blam! Time exploded. The Mad Hatter and the March Hare packed up the White Rabbit and heaved him over the hedge. Well, that was the stupidest tea party I've ever been to in all of my entire life, said Alice. And it was. Alice ran to catch up with the White Rabbit, and I'm sure you know what happened next. She couldn't find him. Alice grew sad and then worried and then frightened, and she cried to herself just a little, missing her home and even her boring schoolwork. The moon curved like a smile in the darkening sky and rose overhead. Oh, I want to go home, said Alice, but I cannot find my way. Naturally, said the moon, turning into the smile of the Cheshire cat. That's because all ways are queen's ways. Alice, curious as ever, did exactly what you might do when the cat opened up a door, revealing the castle. She made her way. There she saw three gardeners painting a white rose bush red. The queen likes them red, said the three of clubs. If she saw white instead, she'd raise a fuss and each of us will quickly lose his head. Oh dear, said Alice, then let me help you. And she began to help. And then a horn sounded. The queen, yelled the three of clubs. Cards came marching from every single direction. Clubs, spades, hearts, diamonds, one, twos, threes, and fours, five, six, sevens, and eights, nines, tens, and even jacks. And almost, almost late, for a very important date, but just in time to do his job, came at last, guess who? The White Rabbit. The White Rabbit blew his horn and announced, Her Royal Majesty, the Queen of Hearts. Alice had always thought it would be so wonderful to meet a queen, but you remember how those, some of those so wonderful things turn out? Who's been painting all my roses red? Off with their heads, yelled the queen. Alice began to politely explain, I'm trying to find my way home. Your way? All ways are my ways. And you won't be surprised to hear what she yelled next. Off with her head! The cards swarmed Alice, and Alice didn't think she would be so afraid of a deck of cards, but she was rather attached to her head. She saw the white rabbit run, so she ran too. Alice ran back through the hedges, back past the Mad Hatter and March Hare, back past Peedledee and Tweedledum. Off with her head! yelled the Queen of Hearts. Alice found the tiny door, locked. I simply must get out, said Alice. But you are out. Side, said the door. Alice looked through the keyhole and the door was right. She was outside, fast asleep, dreaming under a tree on a warm, lazy day. The angry cards and their mean queen charged. Alice, please wake up. Oh, Alice, please wake up, she heard herself cry and then heard her sister cry. And suddenly, Alice was awake, no longer in her wonderland. She went along as it was suddenly time for tea. She thought about Wonderland and her white rabbit and decided she remember them for all time no matter how grown up she might ever be. And then she went along with her sister for tea.